So we're back with another step-by-step -step kind of procedure on how I process. I have some slide film, uh, sheet film in here in the bees sheet film reel thing that I got. So for those of you who don't know, E6 is the chemical process used to process slide film. So color reversal film, any film that when you are done processing it, you have a positive image. Good to have an example probably. Here's an example of a negative that is color positive or slide film. This is a sheet of ectochrome on, in four x five. And if you put a light source behind it, you can see that it is already a color positive. No need to reverse it. In a Lightroom or Negative Lab Pro, it's already the positive image, which is, as you can see, incredibly beautiful and really awesome to look at, which is why I really like shooting slide film. So I shoot a lot of medium format and I also recently have been shooting a lot more large format um, four by five and seeing the negatives come out uh, from processing as positives and getting to like see the actual image right in front of you on the negative is uh, pretty special and pretty cool every time I do it. It doesn't really get old. And uh, although slide film is typically more expensive than color negative film, depending on what project you're doing or your subject or what you're working on, it might be worth the extra cost. Slide film is more finicky than color negative film, has a lot less dynamic range. You have to be like really spot on when metering for it, but we're not gonna really get into that today. I just wanna talk about the chemical process and show you how I do it. I almost always use the Arista E6, uh, Rapid E6, um, chemistry because uh, it's readily available, it's uh, affordable, it costs just about as much as the Cinestill C41, the chemicals that I showed you in my last video. You can get it kind of anywhere. It works great. I use the quart kits like the C41 stuff, so um, a lot of the stuff that I do for E6 is going to be really similar to what I did with C41 with some key differences. Um, so this will be a lot shorter of a video probably. So just like C41, I need to get my chemicals up to temperature. I'm using the same 12 quart cube that I use for my C41, my same piece of crap, Kilitos um, sous vide, which seems to work fine. And uh, instead of 102, this is coming up to 105. Instead of 105, uh, I'm compensating just like I do for C41, and I'm bringing the temperature up to about 106.3 or 106.5. That's going to average out when it's in the tank to around 105, which is gonna be good enough for this. Um, doing it with this method, I haven't noticed any color shifts, any loss of quality, any problems at all. Um, this has worked really, really well. So this is what we're gonna to do today, like every other time. So there are, I said there are several key differences with doing E6. Uh, one of them is that the temperature is much more critical than with C41. I am compensating, but that took a lot of testing to get to where I'm at. You wanna test probably yourself to make sure your setup can get um, to a place where you want because it is really easy to get color shifts if you go too cold or too hot. You're going to pre-soak at 105, but you're also gonna do a rinse after each step. So you have a first developer, you have a color developer, so two developer steps, then you have uh, Blix. It's important that you rinse between uh, developer one, developer two, and Blix. Um, it's just going to make sure things are consistent. It's going to keep the, the, the film up to the right temperature, and you don't want to get any cross contamination with these chemicals. So you got to make sure you do that. First thing I'm going to do is my pre wash, pre soak, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to bring this water up to about 105 to 106 degrees, somewhere in between there. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing I do with C41, which is soak for a minute with my uh, bees processor agitating the entire time. Okay, so we are at 106, water goes in. Oh yeah, so in here is four sheets of expired Fuji Astia. And I'm really excited to see how these turn out. Love that sound. Okay, pre-rinse is done. I'm gonna do one more quick check on the temperature of my developer. Step one, we are at 106 on the nose, which is great, because that's gonna average out in the process. And we're gonna be 
we're just going to be having a good time. Developer number one is in, sealed, on. So according to the little pamphlet that comes with the Arista Rapid E6 kit, you want to do the first developer uh, for six and a half minutes, the second color developer for four and a half minutes, and then the Blix again for six and a half minutes. Developer one is just about done, so I'm going to get the, um, what do you call this? <laughs> the rinse water up to the right temperature. Okay, just about 105, so that's perfect. Mm, developer's still looking pretty good. It's not super dark yet. So this might be, this might be okay for maybe another two batches. So I'm gonna fill and empty this tank with water from the tap about five times to make sure I get all of that first step developer off. Okay, now developer number two, the color developer for four and a half minutes. Boom. All right, just about time for the second rinse and then blitz. So I'm not using my Fuji camera, I'm using a different camera. How's the cinematography, is it good? Did you notice a difference? Color developer two is out. Second rinse. Final chemical step is Blix for a whopping six and a half minutes. Okay, Blix is done. For this final rinse, it's not critical for this water to be 105, 106. This rinse water can be around 100 degrees or even less. Um, but I would say 100 degrees is a good spot, but you're done with the really critical temperature stuff. And now that we're done with the Blix and we're on the wash stage, we can open up the tank and see how bad we screwed up. I see processed uh, positives in there, so that's a good sign. In the, I don't know, 10 years I've been doing E6 at home, I've only had maybe two or three screw ups. If you just pay attention, like C41, uh, you shouldn't really have any problems. Just like last time, I'm putting just like the tiniest third of a cap full of uh, Photo flow 200 in here. Gonna let that chill for about a minute and get my film hanging situation set up. Okay, so now for the best slash sort of tricky part. This reel is really great and works like perfectly for four by five. But the problem is getting the sheets out. See these cutouts? You can kind of grab the edge of it where the coat is and pull it out. Um, but it comes with this little insert that kind of pushes the film up if you push it in from the bottom. But I find that since it's also 3D printed with the same kind of plastic, it can scratch the, the negatives if you're not careful. So I'm gonna do this by hand, which is a little more difficult, but less prone to scratching. Ooh. That's the first one and it looks Pretty good, a little curled, cause you know, it's expired. It worked. Sweet. I said that as if I was surprised that it worked. I'm not surprised that it worked. If you follow, you know, the procedure that's outlined in the pamphlet and you do as I do and are careful and are scientific about it, it's kind of hard to mess up unless you're not paying attention. Um, but, it's very easy to do a good job and have good uh, results if, you know, you're doing your thing. Another one. This one also came out good. Oh, yes. 
I'm especially excited about this batch of 4x5. Uh, one, because I got a new lens. I got the Nikon 150mm f5.6 um, from KEH, and I wanted to test it out. It looks like this lens is great. Here's a picture of Klaus. You can't really see that. I mean, I'll show you when they're dry. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to for these because one, yeah, I'm testing out this new lens that I got that I was really excited about, uh, which it seems to be in perfect working order, which is really great. Uh, and two, uh, because Jackie, my girlfriend, who you guys and most people know on the web as Sour Cream US, has taken an interest in 4x5 and has been shooting uh, some 4x5 herself and has been really getting into it and I'm really, really stoked about that. And I'm really stoked not only because it's another thing I get to share with her, um, which is something I'm super excited about, but it also means that she is gonna be buying film now for 4x5, which means we'll have a lot more 4x5 at hand. And she has taken a big liking to slide film so she's really excited about shooting color positives. So that means potentially she'll be buying more film. So all around good, good times, excited. Um, yeah. All right, I'm gonna clean up a bit uh, and get this stuff sorted and then we'll take a look at the photos. Klaus and I, Klaus is right here. You can't see him, but we're looking at the scans. I just scanned all four sheets of Astia that we processed together. And uh, let's take a look. I think they all came out really good. First off, I'm looking at the fact that my lens works properly and uh, doesn't have any shutter issues and looks to be really sharp. This is a good, this lens looks great. Uh, so this first shot is what looks to be an abandoned house that I found. This image is really interesting because I used the only movement that is available on my speed graphic, which is rise. So I can actually basically move the front standard up. And what that does is if I am wanting to be square on to a subject, but it's too tall for my frame, I can do rise and it'll bring it back into frame. It's good for architectural photography. I don't fully know what it's all good for because I'd never use movements on large format. So either way, I did that with, with this to get this the frame nice and centered and nice and like even and looking right. And I think it did a great job. I think it worked, which is great because I've never done that before. But um, yeah, I like this lens. I dig the way it re renders the color. And this, by the way, is Astia that expired in 2007 or 2001. So it's old. It's old slide film. Typically slide film doesn't last very long, neither does C41 um, after it's been expired, unless it was frozen since uh, it was fresh. So um, I think this was, which is why I think it works really well, but I really love, I really love how this looks. Uh, the second image is at this part of the lake that has like a beach. If you go down this path, you can walk down and around and you can get down to this beach where that little pier is in the, in the middle. I really like these layers, I like the green and then the blue of the water and then the blue of the sky and then the peninsula in the background. If I remember correctly, I think I was at like an F16. This was either like a half a second or a second long exposure. Yeah, I love the way the greens are rendered. I love the, the way the ocean ocean. I like the way the water looks. Really pretty and really representative of what was going on there. So yeah, this looks nice. This is the image of the day. This was the image that we were really excited for. I really wish I would have lined up the horizon better, but it was it, it was hard to see. And Klaus here was being incredibly crazy. So we had to take the shot uh, that we had. But this is Klaus being the mayor of Dogtown. That's you. Do you see? Anyway, um, this was, I think, a quarter of a second. But yeah, again, everything looks really nice. Yeah, the colors are great. Man, slide film, just like, the colors are so vibrant. But that's Cludy being Cludy on, um, on his throne. This is the photo Jackie took. Now, we took some pictures of a Volvo around the corner recently, and the same thing happened on one of our exposures where the top, I guess the top of this exposure, um, where the rebate is 
it's a little bit darker. It's like kind of like a line where it's a little bit darker. And I don't, I don't know what that's from. I don't know if that's from how I loaded the film or, or if there's something in the way, I'm not sure what this is, but I really like the way the light is hitting these trees on the right. The layers are nice, it's really pretty. She was going for this bird. She really wanted to get birds um, in her frame because there was a bunch of birds flying, flying around. She got one uh, seagull uh, close enough to kind of make out. It kind of looks like a piece of dust that got on the negative because it's going fast. And so it's basically just a blur and a blob of white but she got her bird. Uh, I was able to do that whole thing. I was able to process the film from start to finish in my kitchen and then hang everything to dry in my bathroom. I let them dry for a little bit with the help of my girlfriend's um, hair dryer. And then I brought them to my computer and scanned them in, uh, stitched them together. These are two uh, exposures each. It took me like two hours, everything said and done. Um, and it. Turned out great. So this is something that's very doable by anyone. Like I said, if you can do C41, you can definitely do this. You just have to pay, you know, close attention to your timing, to your temperature, and then make sure you are doing a rinse after your first and second developers, and you're golden. If you have been thinking about doing E6 development at home, and have just been like worried about trying it out or not sure if you can do it, um, if I can figure it out, you can definitely figure it out. That Arista, uh, Rapid E6 pack I've been using for a long time. It works really well. I hope they keep making it for a long time because it's been really convenient. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being patrons. Go forth and shoot and process E6 color reversal film without fear, without hesitation. Slide film for everyone. All right, see you later.